everyone. It is good to see you here once again on Dee's Delights. I have a little bit of a cold today, so just bear with me. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to have a COVID test done, hopefully in the next day or two. I've been living with Doug, who has COVID. I don't know if I have COVID or just a cold. Who knows anymore? So anywho, I'm going to get tested. So I'm going to make today vintage Hershey's Rich Cocoa Fudge Recipe from the 70s and 80s. And once I get my test done, I'll be sure to know who I can share this with. It's either going to be with whoever, or it is going to be with people who now have COVID or have already had it. So let's get started. First, you are going to need three cups of sugar. I like to use Domino's. Use whatever you like. Two thirds cup Hershey's cocoa. It says you can also use Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa too. One eighth teaspoon salt. One and a half cups of milk. One quarter cup or half a stick of butter. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. It says it also requires a candy thermometer. Well, I have a meat thermometer here and I looked it up and the one I bought can also be used as a candy thermometer. How cool is that? Double duty thermometer. Great. So I'm going to use that. So first what we need to do, which I have already done, is line an 8 inch or 9 inch square pan with foil and it says to take it up over the side. And we're going to butter that. I just bought some 9 inch pans. Because the last fudge recipe I had called for a 9 inch pan and I didn't have it. So voila. Click the button on Amazon. I have two 9 inch pans. Perfect. So we butter that. We let the aluminum come up over the sides. Butter it. And it's ready for our fudge. One thing you're going to have to do is make sure you follow the directions exactly. Because if you don't, guess what? Your fudge is not going to set up right. And this one especially. It's, let's move this stuff out of the way here. It says first we're going to mix sugar, cocoa, and salt. So let's get our sugar, cocoa, and salt in heavy saucepan. Stir in milk. Cook over medium heat. And when we're cooking it over medium heat, we're going to stir constantly until the mixture comes to a full boil. And when you say full boil, that means it is rolling. It is a full boil. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on medium heat, which I should have already had that same time. Sugar, cocoa, and salt. Let's get that all mixed up here. I'm going to stir this right now with this type of spoon. Won't be able to use that once the pan is hot. Smells good. Have any of you taken tours of the Hershey Chocolate Factory? I love going through that factory. You know, just riding in a little cart. I actually like any ride that involves a cart. I don't have to walk. I don't have to think. I just sit down in that cart, relax, and let them talk to me and show me things. That's the best ride in an amusement park. The ones where I can be lazy. Okay, here we go. That is there. I'll wait till that heats up to medium. And then it says once it hits medium and it has a rapid boil, then it says boil without stirring. At that point in time, this recipe wants us to stop stirring until the mixture reaches 234 degrees. Some of you kids watching here today weren't even around in the 70s and 80s. How sad is that? I was born in the crazy 60s. Wouldn't change a thing. Okay, let's put that there. We're gonna stir this in. Is this ever going to come to a boil? That's the question of the day. I don't know. I 
think I've been here for about 10 minutes, stirring constantly, waiting for some sort of boil to happen. Wait. It's going to start here. It really is. I just don't have much patience. I'm just... I'll put up on the screen how long it took to stir constantly until it came to a rapid boil. It's a getting there. Now remember, don't put the candy thermometer on the bottom of the pan. It's at 221. I need it to come to 234. Just about at 227. This is so intense. Oh my gosh. Give it another minute. Okay, let's give it another minute. <laughs> Remember, you have to be patient. I know I'm not, but you have to be patient. Else it's not going to turn out good. Okay, it's at 231. Three degrees off yet. Three degrees. Three degrees makes a difference. Might not think it does, but apparently in fudge making, it does. 233. 234. It made it. Remove it from the heat. Put in your butter and your vanilla, do not stir. Let it come down to 100, ooh, that vanilla made it bubble. Let it come down to 110 degrees. They say cool at room temperature to 110. Beat with wooden spoon until fudge thickens and just begins to lose some of its gloss. Quickly spread into prepared pan. First time I tried to make the fudge, I didn't want to have to beat it with a hand. I don't have a wooden spoon, but I do have this, which is shaped like a wooden spoon. And it's a firm, firm spoon. So I'm going to use that and whip this up. Beat it up, actually. Uh, the first time when I tried to use it with a beater, it just didn't work. So we're going to start this. It took about 40 minutes to cool to 110. We're going to start beating this up. I'm going to move this in here. What we want to do is lose all the shine, most of it anyway. We don't want to have it really glossy, I guess they say. So I'm going to mix it around really good. You know what? I better start the timer. Go like this. This is what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> This is like arm muscle exercises, at least for one arm. After this, I'll have one big arm <laughs> and one little arm. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the gloss. I'm gonna have to set this down for a little bit. You can hear it like bubbling. And that's air flapping in there. Okay, the fudge seems to be getting thicker. Still has a little gloss or shine to it. Yeah, it's getting thicker. I'm gonna put it in the pan here. I did that for about eight minutes. Fudge is starting to thicken really quick. So we want to get this spread around. There again, if you want a little thicker fudge, just put it in an 8x8 instead of a 9x9. This is getting pretty thick. Okay, now we'll just let it chill, relax. See how it turns out. Wish me luck. If it doesn't turn out right this time, I'm going to have you guys out there try it and tell me who did it and how long you beat it for with a wooden spoon. That's the trick right there. 
So I'll be back probably in about an hour. We'll see how it turned out. This has been cooling for a little while. That makes it so convenient. Feels like it's cooled the whole way through. Let's see how it turned out. Gonna put this down. Well, it's like a piece of that bark chocolate. Let's just move this out of the way a minute. I know, I'm going to be cutting right on my countertop. Don't look. Okay. We're not gonna make real big pieces. These are a little bit bigger. Yes. Yes, indeed. I can tell a difference in this batch. I can tell a difference in the texture. Yes. Perfection. No sugary, grainy texture. Not too hard. Yeah, that's good. If you just want your fudge thicker, put it in an 8x8 where you'll get about this thickness, which is fine. I'm happy. Second batch worked. I'm just going to package this up. It probably took maybe a half hour, 45 minutes to cool down. Maybe not even that much. Just put it on a tray. You know, a wire rack. Tell you what, I'm going to cut these into smaller pieces. So probably two pieces, well they're breaking up a little bit, probably two pieces about this size will have about 186 calories. It's about 90 some per piece, so you'll want to watch how much of that you eat. You know, can't go around just eating it like crazy. Yes, I'm very pleased, very pleased indeed. So thanks for joining me here once again on Dee's Delights and have a wonderful, wonderful evening.